Let's start. I don't know if you're all ready to start. Let's continue with the second half of our morning session. We have a very interesting presentation. You're familiar with this. If my company has hidden the incident, how is it so that the authorities got the information? Francisco Perez Paco here, he's a lawyer, and he's going to explain how the authorities get the information. How will they manage this situation? Let's give a big applause to our friend Paco Perez, and I wish you luck. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank Rooted.com for inviting me. It's a great pleasure to see how interested you are also in legal subjects. In the end, this is part of our activities. You will know that we have to be focused on rules, regulations, and communication skills. You know that recently, and I'm going to mention this again, there is a rule which is a whistleblower, whistleblower, a channel for internally uh, getting information on people breaching the law. So that's related <coughs> according to cybersecurity. Our organizations are compulsory having a system to get information on whomever breaches the security system. At the beginning, I was asking myself, how is it so that the companies wouldn't talk about incidents? Well, it's a reputation. They have a prestige problem. They are afraid of not being able to be up to it. There are some legal responsibility administrations and uh, CEOs. Uh, they have to protect the information we upload to our servers. What we have at the company level, what will happen with our providers, our clients, our employees. What happens is that companies, they take this with a pinch of salt. They're afraid of raising their hand and be transparent and say, that's what happened, and I'm managing the situation. I've solved the problem. Rulers never ever wanted this. One of the main principles of the hacker's code is, if you identify something, let's not talk about it, let's not say anything. Let's tell the company, let's tell the company who's the victim of this breach to uh, allow them to solve the problem. Because if you render this public, what we do is that many people will go about it and the risk will be enhanced because they haven't had the time to uh, bridge the gap to solve the problem of vulnerability that they might encounter. You have to talk to them, solve the problem, and then once it's solved, we can give explanation. This is what in an unofficial mode was done. Legislators, European legislators, would like to change the trend and to say, no, I want companies to be transparent. If you have a breach of your security, we users, we have to be informed about the security breach. And if you're not going to do it, we're going to create whistleblowing systems, tools, so whomever knows can tell the incident or about the incident. That is the environment we're moving now on, and I'll give you information, dates, when will this take place, when will this be compulsory, and we're constructing a new era of transparency regarding cybersecurity breach in our companies. Having said that, what about the whistleblowing, whistleblowing? What is this internal uh, channel to, it's like the whistle, uh, uh, blown by the police agent, and that's been translated and now into our legal framework. When they want to have a whistleblowing system, what is it? In the end, it's just a channel to talk about what's happening, the breaching, breaching the law, breaching safety, breaching security, the uh, non-legal practice. In this case, is a cybersecurity breach. But it's not simple, it is not so easily established. What happens here is that we have a clear-cut structure and we need compulsory prerequisites. This should be effective, what is to be done. We have to check it does work, not only to make it there, but it should be confidential, good, and it's not protecting who's going to 
send an information that there was a breach of the law, but with confidentiality would have to protect the one that's uh, within the blow, uh, blow <laughs> the whistle, so I say. So uh, I have to say that this one that's uh, making the information should be on the safe side to guarantee his safety, his security, his anonymity. We present very many uh, threats. Now the whistleblowing system is there to protect the one that is blowing the whistle. So uh, not to have a consequence of denouncing the situation. Cybersecurity breach or a problem the company would like to hide, wouldn't like to render public. Let's go back to the origin. Are we forced to uh, mention this if we know about it? Are we supposed to do it? Let's go back to 1882 when the law, the legal framework was published, 259 article with regards in uh, the public, uh, public cr crimes. Uh, you have here uh, that it is not necessary to be the victim denouncing this, but uh, po victims should be protected without a person denouncing whatsoever. Article said that if you see a public breach of the law, you're forced to inform the authorities, the attorneys, the judges. If not, you will pay from 25 up to 150 pesetas. That was written in the uh, 19th century language. If we know they're breaching the law, then we as citizens, we are forced to tell the authorities about it. That is not always happening. Uh, you have, uh, for instance, uh, within a family, you are not going to mention this. If you're a lawyer, you should have the right uh, of uh, secrecy and, uh, but if not, you should mention all uh, events breaching the law within a company. We have difficulties to get pesetas to pay for it, but what you're told it does exist. There is a bl whistleblowing law in Spain, or what happens according to rules and regulations. Lately, there were several rules in se per sector where they included that it was compulsory to implement this uh, whistleblowing channel sectors like uh, protection of confidence, fair confidence, fair competition, I mean. It is important due to sensitivity and strategy characteristics. They had some legal requirements in different sectors, but in general now this comprises all sectors from 2019, November 26th, when this was published, the Directive 2019-1037 regarding the protection of people, informing that there is a whistleblowing directive already, and this is what I'm going to mention. The one, the 1037 from last year, Directives needs a translation into the legal framework per country, per member state. So the directive should be uh, translated. They should draft a law, Spanish law, accordingly, and this is what's to be applied. But basic principles, rules, regulations, the framework is already there. So Spanish law will be based on what's uh, demanded by this directive, European directive. And the goal, the purpose, is to establish a minimum ground of understanding for protecting people, informing about breaching the law, criminal offenses, regarding the uh, fact of denouncing whatsoever. This should be done in a, uh, with safety, security. We're going to protect those who, due to their task responsibility, will inform authorities of the company that uh, there are some uh, criminal offenses, breaching the law, this would put at stake the common good or a people in general. So that's why they should have the power to raise their hand and not to be retaliated. They should be able to convey information about what's happening in the case of cybersecurity breach. 
every person knows about it, the person should have a channel to have a word to say, to say that is happening. The company do not want to mention, they do not want to mention this, but that might affect our citizens. So in a very safe mode, you should convey the information to entities in order to manage this properly. That concerns all sectors. I'm going to focus on cybersecurity issues. The directive, the whistleblowing directive mentions cybersecurity. Yes, the addendum 14, it's the introduction, where they explain the spirit of the law and what is uh, the scope of it. They mention infractions or breaching the secrecy that might concern public interest. So there should be uh, severe cases. <coughs> And even, uh, for instance, services like uh, utility companies, transportation, banking, and uh, cloud or uh, other network and internet providers. If we go to the Network Information Security Directive, the NIS Directive, this is the terminology they use. The whistleblowing Directive concerns cybersecurity, of course, and where is it mentioned? It is also mentioned in the core of the law. Infractions mentioned in this NIS directive, the whistleblowing directive. They talk about inf private characteristics, uh, protection of personal data and security of information networks and information systems. Yes, cybersecurity for us is a priority. It's a risk and uh, that might put in danger our safety, our security, that is part of cybersecurity uh, protection characteristics. And uh, whistleblowing directive talk about privacy, they talk about eye privacy, it's a 2002 law that's been modified, the data protection regulations uh, that you all know that's applicable in Spain directly because this is a rule and completed with the data protection network and the uh, digital it is a 3 2018 law implemented in Spain and thirdly NIS directive as I mentioned before in Spain this has been translated in the uh, 2018 law those directives, whistleblowing directives, they try to protect those three sectors, privacy, data protection, and cybersecurity, those three pillars. NIS, NIS directive, as you all know, this has been in the, included in the Royal Decree 2018. They are now drafting the rules and regulations. There will be a Royal Decree developing the 2018 law There'll be de novo characteristics uh, regarding cybersecurity for the next months to come. Article 19 establishes that events should be conveyed within 72 hours since we know about it. We have to notify the authorities within 72 hours. If I am a private company, I will go to the CERF. If not, it's CCN CERT, and that is part of it. to have a specificity and the characteristics of cybersecurity incidents and to explain how we're solving the problem. If we're going to talk about Article 20 of the Royal Decree, they talk about the protection of the one that is relating the situation is mentions what happened in the whistleblower and what happened with this Royal Decree NIS employees and staff, employees and staff, not only our employees, but people who would be related to us, clients, providers, uh, whomever is related to us, those who have relations and who take, people taking part of uh, uh, this, and they inform of our events, they should not have retaliation, they shouldn't have Unless it's done uh, on purpose, if we're hacking the system, then it's a uh, criminal offense. So 
I have to uh, face the law because I've breached the law. But uh, those are protected. Decisions of the employer taken against the uh, labor uh, conditions of the person. Having mentioned there was something breaching the law, the person will be protected by the law. The boss cannot retaliate, cannot uh, kick out the person of the company because it's impossible. Uh, so I'm not saying this is black nor white. I'm saying those are rules, regulations. And as time goes by, that becomes more complex because each situation is different and they're rather complex and it's difficult to demonstrate whatsoever. It's quite clear, black and white, but how to apply this into our daily activities. That is an NIS directive, the Decree 2018. What happens with the data protection regulations? Well, yes, that was mentioned. Article 24 of the Organic Law of Data Protection, elaborating the, RGP, the GDPR in Spain. GDPR in Spain, they talk about internal characteristics. We are forced to inform the data protection agency about the existence of the security breach. And if you don't know about it, I will mention this next year. But it is compulsory. The company should inform the data protection agency that there is a breach. There is a breach. And there is a data leak. It's what they use, fuga de datos. It's a data leak. And the companies should guarantee the protection of the identity and confidentiality of the person that describes the breach or the leak. So if we have illegal activities, if I know they, uh, I can denounce the existence of irregular practice within the company. That's complicated, but to a certain extent, uh, the GDPR protects uh, the person uh, mentioned this in order not to be retaliated. So the person shouldn't suffer the consequences of irregularities. And uh, that is the rule. But what else How uh, about cybersecurity protection and the protection of the whistleblower? Well, if we go to the national strategy regarding cybersecurity measure three, objective three, action uh, line four, it is fostering the cybersecurity of citizens and companies. There are action lines establishing mechanisms, agile mechanisms for private sectors as well as for citizens. It's not only cybersecurity law regarding the circumstances, but also establishing strategies and how to implement those channels fostering the existence of those channels. We'll take part of this. We will explain the existence of those events, those incidents that are not treated according to the law. Another aspect, and I'm not going to, into the rigidity of the legal framework, whistleblowing. Well, uh, it's quite clear. It's to protect classified information, but classified information it's not included in this directive. This is regulated uh, differently. The concept of a worker is a rather a broad concept. It's not focused on people paid, but it goes beyond this. And you can read the directive when they talk about workers. It is whomever is related commercially or according to contracts with a company. What's promoted is that prior to uh, going to the authorities, we should have internally uh, analyzed this because once it goes outside the company, they will have ways to sanction, ways to punish. Let's not always think that the employer is bad and is uh, having a uh, wrong approach. Perhaps he doesn't know about it. Let's clarify the situation, even to the employers. And uh, it says that not only public companies, public administrations, municipalities, more than 10,000 should have the internal channel for denouncing what happens. Also, private companies, private companies, when you have more than 50 employers, employees, sorry, employees, 
uh, from 50 up to 249. You can share channels, but uh, each company, more than 50 workers, should have the compulsory uh, channel of uh, for denouncing legal breach of cybersecurity. This is applicable to companies less than 50 employees in sectors due to the complexity of the sector, public health or environmental aspects. The impact of hiding incidents might have a very severe consequence. Let's imagine pollution. Let's imagine health problems. When lives are at stake, then yes, less than 50 uh, people uh, at a company could uh, be forced to have their own channel. We have internal channels. We have uh, that per uh, or verbally, or you can have applications. You have voice applications. You can have the internet. You can have electronic ways of denouncing what's happening. Easy, but uh, protecting always the information and the person who conveys the information. <coughs> to guarantee confidentiality, once the information is received, we have seven days. For giving a response, we have to tell who's going to investigate what happens. Then there is a doubt, could be a compliance officer, it could be the data privacy officer, that's not clear. We'll see the legal framework in Spain, who the person will be. Response time should be less than three months, according to each case, without, uh, with some exceptions. We have to have a follow-up of the existence of the existing incident. If there is a law breaching, you can go to the Data Protection Agency, you can, you can talk to them. Any time, any moment is good for conveying this law to the Data Protection Agency. There should be an internal uh, file where all the claims should be filed, and this will be open to the authorities whenever they want to look at this, this will be feasible. No retaliation. The directive establishes protection and support measures. Regarding support measures, they talk about no retaliation, no retaliation. Well, of course, a person cannot be deprived from his or her job or uh, denying career development or training or punishing the person in the career development uh, due to the fact that the person has described what happened within the company. Retaliation is quite a broad term. Uh, we are going to protect the person telling the truth. For, uh, the employer cannot go against the employer, the employee who is acting properly, who is acting according to the truth. Also, no responsibility. In the case of a whistleblower, if the whistleblower is telling the authorities the existence of some crimes, criminal offenses, then the person is not responsible because the person correctly denounced the situation. So he's not going to take any legal consequence uh, due to unveiling the truth, unveiling the situation, contracts, relationships, or even commercial or trade uh, secrets. Not to difficult the situation, the person has no, is not liable. The person will be able to guarantee uh, this, his or his protection should be guaranteed. The company is going to be punished if you for instance, try to impede the presentation of the claims if you retaliate, if you have something against the one that's uh, blowing the whistle, or uh, if you're not protecting the identity of the person. If the employer tells this person is the one who tells uh, what happens, the uh, person will have a complicated life, but the law prevails and the law establishes a protection for everyone. We'll see what's going to be uh, 
given Spain as a legal framework timing from when it, shall I establish the internal uh, channel? Well, it's in general, the directive says that it should be prior to the 17th of December 2021. So December 17th, 2021, Everything will be implemented. The channel should be established, developed, uh, tested, proven, confidentiality, and so on. For those identities from private sectors, I'm not talking about public, but private sectors where you have from 50 up to 250 workers, they have a bit more, a uh, longer period. They say that this is 2023, December 17th. 2023 so the law will be enforced from 2021 but this will be applicable from 2023 2024 on so we still have time for maneuver we have the mountain the maneuver in order to think about what the needs are what should be taken into consideration what should be implemented in the organizations to try to establish a design that's different to be transparent, to have the possibility of allowing workers to inform when there are elements breaching the law and the client, the employee, the provider would have the possibility of talking to the authorities and saying they are not paying any attention to me. I've told they were breaching the law, they had some cybersecurity incidents and they are not informed about it, but I have to notify rules and regulators, rulers and regulators, and that's it. And they uh, start with the procedures. In Spain and Europe, we are not going to give a token of recognition financially to the one denouncing the situation. So what we say, it is not for money. In other countries, they've given a compensation, financial compensation to those stop uh, denouncing that the law has been breached. It is not say you're going to make money if you denounce your company. That's not going to happen. We're going to open the window for people having information. It's a window opportunity. If they are breaching the law, the person will inform the company about it. And if not, the person will report to the authorities about it, all the efforts, all the efforts uh, to try to hide vulnerabilities and problems that appear uh, denounced in uh, social media, or if they do not want to inform about it for certain reasons, the rules and regulations will render difficult those actions, those hidden actions by companies that go against transparency that we want to achieve in Europe. As you know, cybersecurity protection is there, and we have time for starting giving it a thought to implement systems within our companies till 2024. And what we want is to have a safer world, better world for all of us. And European authorities, they want transparency, allowing cyber security to be enhanced in companies, taking into consideration that it will be more difficult to hide the existence of uh, cybersecurity uh, breaches that might concern all of us. Thank you. I hope you see it's interesting. You've considered this as interesting. And uh, we're open for questions. Thank you very much for your kind attention and participation. Thank you. And I'm sticking to the timetable. Fantastic questions now. There are many questions over there. When we have a lawyer in front of us, we always have questions. I've always been reluctant to, to talk about it with lawyers, but the only way is to work together. Yes, of course. Congratulations, very interesting presentation. The directive is not yet compulsory, but are companies implementing the rules already? If so, if this is the case, which tools are they using? One belonging to the organization or one external tools that could be copied? Some of them uh, had developed in human resources, something already, we have a trade union already involved, where they work is in that. They have an internal channel and uh, employees, for instance, uh, the right to work, they can uh, inform the company about certain situations that does exist already, but they have to enhance the system, they have to improve it to comply with the directive. 
in order to have safety and protection of the confidentiality and to guarantee that uh, that goes to the right person. So the denounce uh, goes to the right person. So from more than 50 workers, big companies already have that. But small companies, they haven't worked on that because uh, they were able to talk daily with the workers directly. So there have to be an effort to be in tune with the situation. What tools are they used to? They were using internal, internal, internet or specific applications where you could, in a safe mode, anonymously, uh, anonymously uh, you can, with confidentiality, denounce whatsoever. This direction tries, directive tries to uh, make it okay. I'm, I'm, I'm telling the criminal offender that there is a criminal offence. So uh, the external possibility will be there, but internally, but also externalized. It could be lawyers, it could be consultancy, it could be shared with other companies. It's protecting the one denouncing, not to be afraid, not to think that this is going to be unveiled and it's going to be mentioned to. It's complicated, it's very complicated, the one that bridges the law. But what we want is to enhance transparency with the good side of things and the bad side of things. And of course, uh, we'll have to see consequences, of course. Consequences will be there, we'll have to be responsible while managing companies. It is uh, the important uh, task of, uh, uh, we have to protect assets, the information we have, and we have to do it in a certain way, implementing laws, all the technical, technical and organizational measures required among organizational measures. We have an internal uh, channel for denouncing what happens. More questions up there, yes. There is a problem, but not only for entrepreneurs. If at the level of the company it's complicated, I'm going to ask two questions. Regarding the administration, the public administration, what happens? Public administration, they also have a legal a breach is, or the breach of the confidentiality and they do not have the same consequences. It happens nowadays when you read the newspapers. It happens when you have contracts and it is, of course, when they are frauds, when there are irregular characteristics, when the, they pass contract to people. That's a usual way, but of course, in a case of security breaches, if they, uh, town hall or if authorities, regional authorities are uh, breaching the law, there'll be there'll be a channel to say, well, this town hall has a breach, they're not mentioned, but no consequences in the case of public authorities. This is a fact. The thing, thing is that if it is public, there is no consequence. Yes, we need something about it, of course, because if not, this will be useless. Yes, well, sorry. I have to say something. You've mentioned confidentiality. The person denouncing this, why not to render this anonymous? Because I think, if I remember well, there was a paper from the Data Protection Agency talking about it, and they recommended, they recommended that uh, there shouldn't be anonymous channels. In the end, what happens here is that the one denouncing this should have a follow-up of how this has been managed. So it is not to have anonymously, uh, but to have the possibility that if I talk to the authorities and I tell them I, I have denounced this, tell me about what's happening. Uh, so you have to give a response within three months and to uh, have a conversation, so to speak, but not to have this uh, with, uh, in an anonymous way because you could have fake things saying, well, this person is bad, I'm going to denounce him 20 times to see if I can break his career. Now, if I make, if, if I file a claim, I sh I'm responsible for what I'm doing because I cannot use it in order to fake uh, claims or to tell things wrongly. So we have to do it properly. So I will denounce this, but we have to know who the person is because if it is anonymously done, 
I uh, perhaps I may not pay attention if you had to ask who you are. I'm going to explain how I'm managing this because if not, if I just file the claim, you can go to the external channel and they will say, well, I followed the procedure, but nothing was done. It's a way to have a follow up and you have to tell due to the legal aspect or the, if there is, a, for instance, if we're going to take this in front of a judge, we have to, because if not, it's a rumor, it's just uh, something that will not be taken seriously, and we have to take this seriously, and we have to go forward with this. More questions, and regarding the protection. The protection, you've mentioned companies where, well, what happens with the administration, because in the administration, I've read many times, let's, well, if you talk about administration, public administration, that's a different thing, different rules. No, the public administration, there are rules also, and they can be asked for responsibility. You can just take them off uh, their office. It is not saying you're going to pay this. No, it's more complex. But of course, administration, public administration, they're liable for their actions or interventions. The problem is that sometimes that there are different sanctions and the administration ought to be uh, compliant with the law and they should act like any other agent. Consequences sometimes, uh, uh, they seem that everything's calm, nothing happens, but I've been working for public administration and I see there are ways to put pleasure pressure on them to work properly and correctly. Last question, and let's have lunch together. Where the per is same question, okay, we're finished. No further questions, no further questions. If not, let's give a big applause to Paco. Thank you very much for a wonderful presentation. It's been fantastic, thank you, Paco.